Right, okay, so we thought we'd do you a quick video on some tips and advice on how to get your van that bit lower or even low in the first place or all the different levels of low. Now we'll be using Mikey's van as an example, so based around static low, but we'll kind of explain where you'd make some differences if you're on air. Um, but we'll just take you through. Obviously not everybody wants to be this low, um, but there's the different stages from coil over to adjustments and different cutting work you can do and different modifications you can do to get that little bit lower. Um, we will be talking a lot about these, which, well not a lot, but we'll mention these, which are our adjusted leaks we've just had arrive. We've been doing these for a while now for solos just to help get the back end down a bit more if people want to do that. But uh, we now have them for B14s, which should fit van slams, I think, because they're a copy and dimension of those. Um, and then another multi fit one, which another multi-fit one which fits pretty much everything else we think but we'll go through those as, as we do it so there is a downside to being really low and you can't get it on the ramp So we'll just show you how we get around that. So obviously Mikey's van is the extreme of low for a vehicle that's static. So we've started off with solo suspension, which is low anyway out the box. You don't have to run them completely low. So we fit them to the end of people that want them on the highest setting, which is about a hundred mil drop. And then there's various stages of lowering from there. So you're, how, how low is this? Give about 186 mil, I think. So, like that. so the potential is up to 186 mil with some extra work. And we'll kind of run you through the first stage we would do to go lower than they come out of the box. So they're about 100 and 100 at the high setting, I think 140? Yeah. About 140 still out of the box at the lower setting, which is still really low. But if you want to go lower from that, these are just some steps we'd take to, to get you that further south. First of all, where the first modification we'd do would be the top mounts. And Mike will explain the difference and uh, why you would change them and what you benefit from it. So if you've got a T5 or T5.1, now one of these top mounts, quite a lot of uh, rubber, it's like castellation really, um, quite a lot of rubber compared to a T6 where it's quite a lot shallower. So a lot of people upgrade to a T6 from T5 to get a little bit lower. So that's the differences between the top plates as well. So just to confirm, T5 and T5.1 look like this. Uh, and then that's a T6 top plate and a T6 rubber. And from there, that's what I'm running on my van, is a machined T6 plate. So that sits further further down rather than on the rubber there. So the bearing sits a lot lower down. And that's about 12 to 15 mil people reckon. So you see, see the difference of the machine in there. So that will sit at the top of the spring up there. You can see that's where the bearing is and it sits just up you can see it in there just up inside between the bearing and the rubber so they say that you get 50 about 50 mil drop if you're going from a t5 one because of the extra rubber and the plate um, if you've already got a t6 you don't need the full kit you would just need the machine plate because you already have the shorter rubber so that's going to gain you about 12 mil by uh, replacing just that over your standard plate uh, yes about 15 here and about 12 if you already have a t6 and you just need the plate if you already have a t6 so all of these modifications can be done to all coilovers, um, no matter what you've got. The, as long as you've got a T30, the hub mod works, and pretty much everything else um, is the same, whether you've got Joms, Van Slams, Stance, B14s, the same modifications can happen. It can all help bring the, the uh, front end down a bit. Um, so the next thing we would do would be what we call a stage one hub mod. Uh, now, the hub mod is just here. So, Mikey, do you just want to explain what we would class as stage one? 
So stage one, there is a lip just here on the standard hub. Obviously it's been taken out on this. You would grind it back so this hub comes through, uh, the strut comes through the hub and it would sit onto the brake brackets. So that would gain you possibly about 10 mil, depending on where the brake brackets are, are welded onto your strut. So your hub mod, lots of people will just use a hole saw and to cut through the hub, um, they, which is fine, there's no problems with that other than they do destroy hole saws, you'll use pretty much one every time. So if you're doing lots, they're not great. Uh, the other problem is quite often when you hole saw through, people cut CV boots. We have quite a lot of that, the people that have done that. So um, we would use one of these. Die grinder. I've got a long reach one. This just makes it a bit easier to get all the way down the hub with. But it's nice, easy to use, it's fairly quick as well. And you're less likely to, or well, you're not going to cut through your CV boot. So that's just leaving your original brake brake bracket brackets uh, original brake brackets that's a mouthful isn't it in the same place and just allowing the hub just to be passed through the lip now this has gone to the next extreme route to explain after but that gains you think about up to 10 mil just depending uh, again that can be done on all your coilovers as long as you've not got t32 well, the damper's held to the hub in a different way so you don't have this ability to pass the the uh, strut through the hub uh, so from there you would do what we would class as an extreme hub mod and if you want to explain an extreme hub mod so then you would cut your brake brackets off completely and then a lot of people cut them off completely we wouldn't recommend that we'd recommend sleeving so i review some sleeve the same size as the strut and welded them on there to pass the hub through uh, the strut through the hub a lot more so then that's sat on the anti-roll bar to make sure that that doesn't go anywhere and that can't go through it in case the bolts ever fail on the back. Yeah, so like Mikey said, a lot of people will just cut the sleeve, uh, this brake line bracket off and just pass it through. We prefer to sleeve and weld it just for extra security. Um, and then that allows you to then make the distance that you require to uh, pass the strut through the hub uh, without it, with it never being able to slip because it's still sitting on the new bracket that we've sleeved. Uh, and then from there, the next option is the skinny CV boot option. So this actually has uh, new shorter drive shafts on it with the sk uh, skinny CV boots that Mike has fitted. And the skinny boots just allow you to drop that hub through, uh, sorry, that strut through even further closer to the boot. But if you give any of the Mikey, you'll probably come down a couple more then. Uh, people think that, but the, uh, because of the way the drive shafts are lengthened on the other side, you'll see that that one's a lot closer oh, because of go. the length of the drive shaft. So that one is touching there, uh, practically touching until you jack it up. All right, yeah, fair enough. Lesson learned. Yeah. Been taught by the master. Yeah, so skinny CV boots are the next option. Um, as with uh, anything going really low, there is always implications, and in some cases, shortened drive shafts are needed. Now, generally, shortened drive shafts are anything that's kind of extreme low. So solo's out of the box. I don't think we've ever had to fit short and drive shafts not or anything, out box, standard no. out of the box, no. Uh, and even vehicles that are going really low, not all of them need them. There's no kind of exact science to which vehicles do or which suffer from it more than others. But um, this had horrendous drive shaft judder, didn't it, when, uh, when it was first done. But the short and drive shaft solved that straight away. Our flat web is the same that's on air. That would judder no end when you were going around right hand bends and the short and drive shaft solved that, solved that instantly. Um, so massive improvement, not always needed, Don't. it's not like essential that you fit them when you're going really low. It's a kind of a suck it and see thing. Out of the box you shouldn't have any problems, low, start adding some of the modifications and yes possibly you might need them. Um, but you'll know that as you lower it and something you can just add to at a later date. Okay so when going really low you can kind of start to cause some issues under here. So with Mike as you can see he's worn through his arch line, he actually cut a chunk of the arch. Did you cut a chunk of the arch? Oh, no. no. No, I'll let no. it rub its own no. way through. You just let it rub its own way through. Uh, it's not really kind of caused any damage other than it's just a plastic liner that's worn away. A lot of vehicles on air suspension would have this cut out completely. Some people remove it totally or some people just cut a section out so it eliminates that rub. But um, not really doing any harm, it's just wearing through the plastics and it kind of finds its own point. But again, you only need to worry about this if you're really low. Bearing in mind, Mikey's had every modification you can have and he's running... Um, various different wheel sizes so in time he's kind of worn through there and there is a f some little signs of rubbing under here but again that's only if you're going extremely low I also added a H&R anti-roll bar um, this doesn't make you go any lower doesn't make you any higher but it's the best unseen modification as most people would tell you 
um, to stops all the body rolling. It makes it handle a lot better. So that helps. You, you're less likely to get rolls. So you're less likely yeah, to, rub less on the like to rub on the arches or tag a wing or anything like that because it just stiffens that up when I'm going around corners. And they are really good. Yeah, I mean, really we, good. we fit them on all of ours, the standard all of our own vehicles. Unfortunately, you can't get an anti roll bar for uh, a T6.1 yet, but that's something that we're working on with a manufacturer and it will come in, in the future. On my 6.1, I'm only running a rear anti roll bar and no front. Um, but yeah, as soon as they're available, I will definitely fit one. Like Mikey said, they don't get you any lower, but they um, definitely improve the ride considerably and the handling uh, make, eliminates that body roll, but also you're less likely to have any rubbing issues or, or you know, yeah, if the vehicle's not rolling around. Right, so to the back, and uh, Mikey will just take you through some things you would need to do. Some things that we do as standard here for ever fitting solos. Um, uh, yeah. Do you do it on B14s? I don't, don't do it on B14s. You no. can shave the spring nipple down on B14s if you get rid of the adjuster. Yeah. Which um, is quite advised. But yeah, we'll just run you through some steps on the back to get the, that back end down as well. So, um, start off with the uh, ABS line relocation. It's normally on top. We uh, drill the holes and move, move the clips onto the outside of the arm so it's not going to get trapped up here. We also cut the rear bump stop down at the top. That's been cut down in there. And then we do that as standard on all solo fits. Um, so if you were going just solo without just a delete like this, you just cut that down to the, the height, the, 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 the depth of the adjuster. Shave the top nipple off, that's what we like to call it. We all like shaving nipples, don't we? Um, but yeah, this has got the adjuster, the deletes on, which we'll come to in a moment. This one also cut or notched out for the shock here to stop any hitting up here and down there. That stops the arm from hitting at the front and it also stops the brake line from getting crushed. So again Mikey's done that on his because he's the extreme end of static low. Um, that's the same place you would cut it on air. Lots of people kind of go all out and cut more away than necessary. That's that's the right amount to cut away with your air or kind of extreme low on statics and still keep it safe and neat but uh, yeah just safety reasons to why you would do that but again those extra cutting is only necessary if you're going extra low standard solos out the box or any of the cordovers out of the box, out the box wouldn't need I didn't the, get that oh, could you try again shut up Siri uh, you, you wouldn't need that so solos are at pretty much I think the lowest coilover you can get out of the box uh, without doing anything dangerous or stupid like cutting your spring down yes that will make you lower but it will fail an MOT and it's not safe uh, so those are a shortened spring anyway um, but like you say we would always as standard shave the nipple off when we use an adjuster but like here Mikey's use an adjuster delete so the reason why you would use an adjuster delete is it holds the spring in place without any knocking if you remove that adjuster completely um, this is going to be moving around and knocking uh, on the vehicle so the adjuster delete eliminates that and holds it in place they're made for us by powerflex so they're really strong it's really good quality uh, they're not cheap but they're well worth having right so we're just to delete so this was the solo one that we brought out first uh, and that would be an adjuster so you can see the difference in height obviously they sit that way up on, on the top of the vehicle um, but yeah for, for these purposes we'll show you this way so you can see the depth difference the adjuster delete allows you to remove the adjuster and just have this instead and the out side or the uh, external dimension of that is the same or very similar to the internal internal dimension of the spring, spring. Um, but that's specifically for solos that was designed uh, for that um, dimension so as much as that is the difference you get more of a drop than the difference between there and there and Mikey will explain why a bit of a science behind it but there's leverage on the arm the spring is further in than the center hub of the wheel or the center of the wheel so a mil drop inboard is about 1.5 mil outboard where your wheel is. So if you're going 10 mil lower at the spring, it's about 15 mil at the wheel. There you go. Hope you understood that because it's all a little bit beyond me. So that's that. So um, yeah, we did the solo one and people were asking us whether they would fit other springs, but they wouldn't because of the um, external dim um, dimension of that being different to the ID of the spring. So we then uh, had these made. So we had one made for the B14 because that's probably the next most common or probably the most common suspension that people want to do. The problem with B14s is if you hub mod or anything your back end sits up a lot higher 
um, because you've only got on a point that you can go with the adjuster all the way down. When you start removing the adjuster rings or the adjusters all together, the rear springs start to knock. So this now allows you to bring your B14s down. You can remove your adjuster, fit your adjuster delete, and then from the front then you can start doing your hub mod and, and bits to bring your front down to match it. It will, it will bring it down considerably. You're still not going to be anywhere near as low as solos, but um, it is an improvement if you want to go lower. The one thing to bear in mind though is solo set higher will ride better than B14 set lower for that reason. So you're better off if you want to go that bit lower and you're looking at purchasing your coilovers, you're better off going for a solo and set it on a higher setting than a B14 on a lower setting. But if you're not going for a crazy low, um, B14s are about 15 to 50 to 70 mil. Yeah, they're as good as it gets. Massive fan of them when we fit more B14s than anything. Uh, we also do a multi-fit adjuster delete. So we've tried this adjuster delete on lots of things uh, and so far it fits on both but uh, you'll tell us, um, I'm sure, wh which ones you find it does and doesn't fit on. Uh, we measured it around Gaz and a few others. I think Joms, VMAX, possibly Bluebird, I think. Yeah, so it fits on most. So it's just uh, um, um, a lot of the, the uh, I don't want to say cheaper, but the cheaper and some of the Chinese ones, not that they all are, uh, use a very similar spring uh, dimension. So they should fit with most. Uh, yeah, so multi-fit, or I think we advertise it's gas or multi-fit, um, B14 and solo adjusters deletes will all allow you to bring that back end down that little bit more. So one more thing worth mentioning, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just take the, uh, the adjuster rings off the uh, adjuster plate? And the answer is that that dimension there is smaller than the spring. So the spring would pass over if you took that larger ring off. Uh, you can get away with removing some bits of it, but by the time you start removing it all and just trying to sit on that, the main adjuster, it just doesn't work. You still get a knock-in and that falls through the spring. So, cough up and buy a set of them.